马来西亚总理访华，开启中马关系新篇章。Our new prime minister's visit at the end of the month will give further boost to this very new and exciting period in bilateral relations. AUKUS 核潜艇计划细节公布。Our concern with AUKUS is it has the potential of rapidly escalating situations. We view very seriously and with great concern any steps which. May result in a rapid escalation of a military situation. 风云对话专访马来西亚驻华大使努希尔万。三月三十一日下午，国家主席习近平在人民大会堂会见来华进行正式访问的马来西亚总理安瓦尔。这是安瓦尔就任马总理后首次访问中国。安瓦尔说：“我是作为中国的真正朋友，怀抱对中国的真诚友好来华访问。”今年是中国和马来西亚建立全面战略伙伴关系十周年，明年还将迎来两国建交五十周年。此访中，中马领导人就共建中马命运共同体达成重要共识。安瓦尔明确表示，马方支持中方提出的全球发展倡议、全球安全倡议、全球文明倡议，愿同中方深化共建“一带一路”合作，中马关系将由此开启新的历史篇章。本期风云对话，我们走进马来西亚驻华使馆，对话马来西亚驻华大使努希尔万，畅谈新时期的中马关系。Good afternoon, Your Excellency. Thank you so much for coming on Talk with World Leaders. It's great to have you. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Let's begin with uh, China-Malaysia bilateral relations. Now, this is a very special year because it marks the 10th anniversary of the Belt and Road Initiative. It is also the 10th anniversary of the China-Malaysia establishment of comprehensive strategic partnership. Mm -hmm. And next year is going to be the, the 50th anniversary of the establishment of the setting up. Um, of bilateral relations mm. between China and Malaysia to push the bilateral relations to a new level. Mm. So, Ambassador, let's talk about some of the specific ways mm. to improve and further enhance bilateral relations between China and Malaysia. I think we need to recognize mm. that uh, uh, China-Malaysia bilateral relations is fundamentally very strong and it's uh, very special as well. Uh, because uh, of course it's a relationship that goes back thousands of years, upwards of uh, twenty percent of our um, population is of ethnic Chinese origin. There still exists uh, very vibrant uh, vernacular schools in uh, in Malaysia teaching in Mandarin, um, and of course the people-to-people -people links are, have traditionally been very strong as well. In addition to that, we are also both uh, emerging developing countries. And we have a common vision of uh, how the world uh, should be. Uh, it is a world of uh, multipolarity, uh, which respects uh, territorial integrity, the sovereign equality of states, and things like that. So that's broadly uh, a, a solid basis of uh, relations between our, between our two countries. And I think um, our new prime minister's uh, visit at the end of the month will give a further boost to uh, to the to this very new and exciting period in bilateral relations. Absolutely. Now you mentioned this very solid foundation between the two countries. Mm -hmm. Now your new prime minister uh, Anwar Ibrahim he mentioned that China is pivotal to Malaysia's economic development, mm -hmm. and China is a very important economic partner mm -hmm. for Malaysia. Mm -hmm. Please give us some examples um, to elaborate this. The first big ticket number is obviously the trade, of course, volume of trade, trade figures uh, between mm -hmm. between Malaysia and, and China. And citing Chinese figures, mm. uh, it was about 203.6 billion dollars last year. Mm. Um, the first time we've breached the 200 billion uh, uh, level ever. China has been Malaysia's largest trading partner mm. for the past 14 years, mm. and again, we Malaysia was uh, China's ninth largest trading partner. Chinese investments in Malaysia has uh, also increased. Uh, traditionally, it was in the manufacturing sector, mm. um, but now increasingly there's a lot of uh, investment in the digital economy, data centers, and so on and so forth. Last year, there was a very big investment uh, from ByteDance, uh, which has established a, a very large data center mm -hmm. in uh, in Malaysia. I think that uh, in terms of economic relations, these will go uh, become even stronger. Mm. One, because we are seeing into force the. Uh, regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, the RCEP. Two, 
uh, we will soon be adopting, I think, the new five-year program of work to enhance economic relations between the two countries. And uh, thirdly, uh, for um, ASEAN and China, we will be seeing an improvement in terms of the ASEAN-China Free Trade Agreement. Fourthly, the China's eventual uh, membership of the CPTPP with this will give an even greater impetus to trade between our trade and economic relations between both our countries. So mm -hmm. very optimistic. My next question is about the China ASEAN Expo, mm. which has been the preferred gateway yeah. for Malaysian companies to mm. get their products exactly. to the Chinese market. Uh, and I think this year I read figures, some 150 companies are going to be joining the China yeah. ASEAN Expo, uh, yeah. going to be held in Guangxi mm. in China. Mm. Tell us please, how, how are the preparation works going and what are some of the special products that will be promoted um, this well, year? Well, last year, Malaysia was a, a guest country of honour. The Kai Expo is quite unique. It is uh, a retail exhibition where people get to buy stuff. You know, so it's not just to order things. And usually the kind of products that we um, sell uh, in, in the Kai Expo are uh, uh, things like uh, Musang King Durians, okay. uh, a bird's nest, uh -huh. uh, pastries, confectionery products. All of which like I'm that. a big fan of. Uh, yeah, there yes. you go. Yeah. We, as in Malaysia, we've not uh, taken the opportunity to expand our product range as widely as we could have, I think. Many Malaysian companies have mm. entered into a, a very large and deep comfort zone mm. in terms of selling their products to China. Obviously, they must be doing very well. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but because of that, the drawback is they don't have any... Uh, necessarily an incentive right. to do more with the new products. For things like uh, Musang King Durians, as well as uh, Bird's Nest, there's really not a lot of competition. So mm. that's, that's one factor. I think the other factor mm. as well is uh, it relates to the pattern of trade between both our countries because 35% uh, of uh, our trade, Malaysia mm. and, uh, and China, is uh, semiconductor and as well as electrical and electronic items, 35%. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so 35% of 203 billion dollars is a very large uh, figure indeed. The, uh, the second component in terms of what we sell to China are basically petroleum, uh, natural gas and petroleum products. Mm. Taken together, semiconductors and uh, gas and petrochemical products, they are more than slightly above 50%. Mm. So these are not the kind of stuff that you'd sell in an expo, right? I've, I've always advised Malaysian companies to do a better job in terms mm. of expanding their, 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 their product range and also to improve the quality, presentation and branding of Malaysian products as well so they can better penetrate the Chinese market, which is becoming increasingly more competitive. 除贸易合作外，中马在数字经济领域的合作也潜力十足。两国的合作主要动力源于中方推广数字丝绸之路与马方实现数字化转型的需求。去年七月，时任国务委员兼外长王毅访马期间，中马就培育数字经济合作新增
uh, which I think both our countries need to look at more deeper in this area is um, the production of content because obviously there is a lot that China has, has to offer uh, in terms of content but uh, does not necessarily uh, get dispersed as well as it should to the wider world because you know obviously China is a huge market it's a, it's a civilizational country and it is very unique so therefore the idea of uh, exporting Chinese content products to the wider world uh, presents a, a challenge you know, to China. I know that uh, when our Prime Minister wrote to President Xi Jinping to congratulate him on his reappointment as uh, the President uh, a couple of weeks ago, one of the points which our Prime Minister mentioned was how natural it is uh, for China's soft power to expand as its econo economic power expands as well. But the, the challenge, I think, for China is to find ways to make the dispersal process more efficient uh, and more widespread. And I think in this case, Malaysia can play a pretty unique role uh, because, as I mentioned, of the uh, common cultural heritage that we have amongst our, uh, amongst our peoples, as well as the reach that Malaysia has because of our history, our links with the Islamic world, our links with the West, again, because of our colonial, uh, colonial history, and very many other things. So uh, that's one area which I think uh, both countries need to explore further.当地时间三月十三日，美国总统拜登在加利福尼亚州圣迭戈海军基地与澳大利亚总理阿尔巴尼斯以及英国首相苏纳克举行会面。会后，三方公布的联合声明透露了 AUKUS 核潜艇计划的细节。细节公布后，马来西亚政府发表声明，称对该计划对地区和平与安全因此面临的威胁表示担忧。马方警告称，应避免任何可能引发军备竞赛、影响区域和平与安全的挑衅行为。I think the Malaysian Foreign Ministry recently issued a statement restating its position on the enhanced trilateral security partnership, which is known as AUKUS. The Malaysian Foreign Ministry basically stated that it calls on all parties to comply. Uh, and respect the current regime mm. in regard of nuclear-powered submarines mm. in its waters. Mm. How do you think this affects the region? Do you think it poses uh, a mm. challenge to the security in the region? You know, if, um, if you analyse Malaysian, Malaysian foreign policy since independence, um, you'd realise um, that how anti-militaristic it has been. This springs from something very fun fundamental in our society. Mm -hmm. When I was the Deputy Secretary General, I, uh, I had very many ambassadors from all over the world who, who, who commented on, the, on how unmilitary Malaysian society are in general. Obviously, if you look at the polls, the military tends to be a, a very popular institution because, you know, when, like any, any other country in the world, when you have uh, crises like floods, etc., you have to use military assets to, uh, uh, to help in the process. So for the Malaysian public, that's why the, the military tends to, be, uh, tends to be very popular. But you don't get a sense that the presence of the military is very pervasive in, in, in Malaysian society. So this has resulted in a, in a pretty st very strong strand of anti-militarism in Malaysian foreign policy. Our concern with, with AUKUS mm. is that it uh, can, has the potential of rapidly uh, escalating situations. Um, because, you know, at the end of the day, uh, as they say, uh, peace and war first begins in the minds of men, right? Mm. So if you frame your analysis or your view of the world or the region in those terms, then the likelihood of you taking action on them 
is much more than if you hadn't. So this is, this is our, our main concern with the orcas. And on the subject of uh, whether it is uh, consistent with, uh, with the provisions, the various provisions of the, um, of the anti-nuclear international regime, of the international anti-nuclear regime, is something which I think is uh, taken up in the, in the IAEA in Vienna. But certainly the, the, the point is that we view very seriously and with cons great concern any steps which may result in a rapid escalation, escalation of uh, a military situation in the region. Mm. And what actions has Malaysia taken either in bilateral channels or multilateral channels to uh, prevent any escalation of conflict? I think the first thing that, uh, that, that we've done is mm. talk to the proponents of this mm. and to express our, our concerns. Mm. Uh, but I think uh, from my own experience part of the problem is as they say uh, if you have only a, a hammer in your toolkit, everything looks like a nail. So uh, there is a sense that competition necessarily means military competition, uh, which, is, which is to us uh, not, not very healthy. Mm -hmm. uh, so bilaterally, we've uh, taken, uh, taken this up. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I think there is also uh, an important role that ASEAN needs to play. Uh, and certainly we need to step up our game uh, because uh, every country in the world subscribes uh, to the notion of ASEAN centrality. I mean, I've not heard of any country which has spoken against it, but um, obviously these, these kind of initiatives have an impact on that notion of ASEAN centrality, especially if it's not caused through uh, the usual ASEAN-led uh, channels. Mm. Um, so ASEAN needs to, to me, to come up uh, more strongly with a position mm. on, 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 uh, on, on these issues. Mm. Uh, we have obviously the mm. various plat platforms for this, the ASEAN Regional Forum, you know, we have the uh, uh, ASEAN Defence Ministers Meeting Plus. So I hope there will be some movement to simmer down the temperature on not only AUKUS but potentially any AUKUS-like Arrangements in the future. In the last year, the 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 然而现今的马来西亚政坛活跃五十多个政党，在复杂的政治图谱下，安瓦尔领导的联合政府面临了哪些困难和挑战呢？ It has been more than a hundred days since uh, your prime minister was elected. How is the unity government doing? I mean, he promises to revive the economy, mm. mend the political rifts, and mm. tackle tackle grants mm. in the society. Right, right. Uh, how is that going? Mm. Has it lived up to voter expectations? Well, his uh, his ratings are uh, are quite high. Um, so certainly, there is a a lot of sympathy and support for for his agenda. And I think there is also a realization about the seriousness. Mm. Of, of this government in uh, tackling these kind of these kind of issues, I think one important point that the uh, prime minister has made and keeps on repeating is that the government is not involved in measures taken by independent branches to uh, resolve the corruption issue. So he said that he that the judges are free mm. uh, to do uh, what they think is correct based mm. on the law. Uh, likewise, the Anti-Corruption Commission is also free mm -hmm. to do what they think is correct in the eyes of the law. I think as far as corruption is concerned, the public generally feels that there is this, uh, mm -hmm. this genuine attempt. Mm -hmm. uh, but you rightly mentioned that there is a... Um, I wouldn't say there is a political rift, mm -hmm. uh, because I don't think we, we've come to a point where there is... Uh, where, where Malaysian politics is very fractured, mm -hmm. but certainly uh, parties uh, across the political divide are much more critical of parties on the other side of the aisle. Mm. How difficult is it to balance the different interests of different parties for the new government? Well, 
Uh, obviously, in a maturing or mature democracy, it's very difficult. Um, but I think at the end of the day, um, a political system um, that reacts to the needs and aspirations of the, uh, of the common man will derive its strength from the common man. Mm. Uh, so regardless as to uh, whether your political opponents mm. uh, throw brickbats at you and you respond to them, um, I think, as they say in English, the test of the pudding is in the eating. You know, people, people will know whether the government is de delivering on its promises as well. Mm. This is expressed in uh, the political choices that they make. Mm. Mm. What would you say is the biggest challenge the government currently faces? Well, it's a slew of challenges, uh, really. Prime Minister says that uh, um, corruption is endemic. Mm and can potentially affect the uh, governance structure of the country, so that's why he's very serious about, uh, about uh, addressing, addressing this issue. Secondly, in a situation where government debt is, uh, is, is very high, that affects the structure of the economy, that affects the ability of the government to do things, obviously. Thirdly, as, as I mentioned previously, there is a political cu culture which has resulted in political opponents becoming much more critical of, uh, of one another. To contrast it, and this is not just a, a phenomenon that's, uh, that's happening in Malaysia, I think this is a phenomenon in any country where the political system uh, pits one party against uh, the other. I think generally everywhere in the world this is something which is, uh, which is happening. It is increasingly a, a global political culture which is perhaps different in the past. Mm. I'm not sure whether I'm looking at the past through rose-tinted glasses but it's different in the past where, uh, of course, people have difference of opinions based on very fundamentally different outlooks of how the world should be, but there was a desire to work together to come to common solutions. This was the case in the US, this was the case in the UK, in very many Western countries as well, which I think is, is increasingly becoming absent. Anwar领导的团结政府已执政满百天 and how do you balance that relationship with China and with the U.S.? You know, I, in, in all frankness, I, 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 I take issue with uh, this view that you need to balance once again, one against the other. Mm. Before coming here, I was the Mm. Deputy Secretary General of the Foreign Ministry, and I was handling bilateral relations, Malaysia's bilateral relations with all countries in the world, mm. including with uh, China and, and the US. Mm. And, and I say this in all frankness and sincerity, mm. there's never been a situation where mm. I have taken a decision or I've recommended uh, a certain course of action for the government to take mm. that I had at the back of my mind that if I do this with China, will the Americans be upset? Mm. Will I do this with the um, uh, with Americans? Will the Chinese be upset? So this idea of uh, of Malaysia, I can't speak for the rest of Southeast Asia, obviously, but the region having to balance mm. um, China and uh, U U.S. is based on a false premise mm. that uh, countries in the region or countries in Malaysia don't have a power of agency on our own because because you do. Mm. We do, and you know, like China, we will decide on the basis of what we feel to be uh, our national interests. Nusir Wan Dashi, in the Malaysia Chinese Foreign Ministry, he Malaysia Foreign I first came to China in 1995, to Beijing. Obviously a different city then, with a sense that there was a lot of energy in, in the country. I can tell this anecdote in great and graphic detail. I went to a hotel, and at that time there were not that many hotels which were open to foreigners. And I had problems with a, a key 
uh, the key to my hotel room. And the, the janitor, he must have been a boy, could have been more than 16 at that time, uh, saw that I had problems uh, with, with the key. And obviously he didn't speak any English, and I didn't speak any Mandarin, so it's like a chicken talking to a duck. But then he, between our facial gestures and gesticulations, he understood what the problem was. So he took the key, and what he did was, I think it was on the 14th floor or something like that, he, he took that key and he ran down. He ran down, and then he, uh, he ran up again with a new key, I, I assume. A and I asked him, like, look, if you have this key, well, why don't you just take the lift? Yeah? So he said to me, no, the, the, the lift is just for guests. Because, you know, he was working level by level, and he was using the stairs. Mm -hmm. So I was uh, very impressed with his, uh, with his, with his energy mm -hmm. and with his dedication as well. Because in, in very many other countries in the world, you know, the, the janitor who sees this person having problems, he just like turn away and stuff like that, right? But this is what he did. So I remember... The Chinese are always very eager to help. Exactly. So I was thinking to myself that, wow, you know, if you have uh, a billion people like this, this country is going to go very far and very fast. And it's gone much faster and much further than even I, and even I anticipated then. I always wondered what happened to that boy. Mm. You know, he may have been a billionaire now. You know, he he maybe he maybe owns the hotel. I'm not sure. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's a that's a very interesting story. Mm. Um, I think it says a lot about right. your, I suppose, your connection with China, mm. the impression it left on you uh, when you first visited.